Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to Speak to Me First podcast show. Today, again, it's been an amazing week, but more so it's been an amazing month because again, it's been amazing guests. I don't know. I'm using the word amazing like three times because it's just that good, folks. I'm telling you, thank you so much for uh, joining and listening today. When you hear this video or when you see the video, you will not be disappointed. I have in the house today, and I'm telling you, she comes with a big, bold, beautiful smile from the Pacific Northwest. We talking Oregon, folks. So there we go. And her name is Lee T. Mai. Lee T. Mai. Don't forget that name because she knows all about branding, marketing. She is a strategist of both. And yes, she is a content creator. She's always got something cooking out there on social media. And today, I finally had a chance to connect with her via LinkedIn. I'm so excited because I'm going to get right into it. So first, I want to thank my national as well as international guests that will eventually listen to this episode of Speak to Me First podcast show. And I'm your host, Toy Johnson Vincent, the no sugar coating coach. You know who I am. Don't forget to subscribe and like the podcast. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest today. And it's pronounced Lee T. Mai, but she spells it L Y, second T H U Y, and the last name M A I. And there you have it. Welcome, welcome, Lee T. How are you? Hi, I'm so happy to be here. I love your energy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Got to do it. Got to bring it. <laughs> yes, but don't catch me near the end of the evening. And then maybe I'll be <laughs> deflated by that. <laughs> but um, I'm loving it because you're pretty much you're in in the Pacific Northwest and I'm right on uh, in the greater Atlanta area, but I am a native New Yorker. So I do thank you so much because I realize you're about three hours behind me and um, <laughs> I might try to figure out how can I get some time back when I'm talking to you. But um, <laughs> tell us, um, Liti, thank you so much for joining with our with our time. And I know we're going to try to keep this on a time because we're somewhat limited. You are a business and brand strategist, as well as a content creator. And I know there was one other thing out on your profile, although you're not, you don't really delve in that business any longer, but people need to know that you just have an amazing background also as an event designer or planner, et cetera. So uh, tell us what's going on with Lee T and um, you know, who are your clients? Who do you help? And how do you empower them? Yeah, yeah. I think um, so many entrepreneurs are multifaceted. And it's one, just because we have to build up the experience, but two, because you kind of just learn along the way what it is you're good at and how you can end up helping people. Mm -hmm. So my first career was in marketing and event planning. Mm -hmm. And then I transitioned over to business coaching, branding, marketing, doing strategy. And the through line everywhere was actually storytelling. All you're doing when you're creating an event or an experience, and then even a business in the marketing, it's all just storytelling and creating an experience and a feeling and a story for the people who are on the other end of it. And I think that's how my journey took place. Um, my clients, my clients are my clients are entrepreneurs now. My clients are normally um, female. You know, we are, we're busy women. We're ambitious. We have a lot on our plate. So many of my, my customers, my clients are moms or business women, career women, have multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. And what we need is the strategy and the story to get our dreams to reality. We want to make these businesses happen because we have a lot to do and we need to make a way to make that happen. Wow. I mean, and is it so true that a lot of your clients and, and you said now they have become entrepreneurs, but do you primarily work with um, people that they're just thinking about having their own business and they have no clue of what a brand is or where to start? Or are you looking at seasoned uh, professional entrepreneurs, business owners? 
Yeah, it's, it's kind of been all over the board. However, the majority of my clients are people who have been running their businesses for a couple of years. And what they're noticing now is that they may have been able to make some sales and get an idea of what they're doing, but they're missing a really important piece in their business, which is the strategy. Because business isn't just getting out there on Instagram and it's not just like making a sale here and there. It's a continuous process. It's a strategy, it's goals. And then it's again, that story that you have to tell to your audience over and over and over again, but in a way that works for you and in a way that's authentic for you. And we miss that because we're so excited at the beginning to just make a sale, get a customer that we forget to do the foundational pieces that are actually going to create a sustainable business Mm long-term. And when you talk about marketing, because when I think about it, I also think about it in terms of sales, because what I found, and I remember a coach told me, and I am a coach, and I said, no, no, I'm not selling anything. No, no, what are you talking about? I'm not a salesperson. And she says, listen, Coach Toy, you're selling something, right? Whether it's a product, whether it's just, you know, whatever you, your story, um, and, and you never know. And, and also at the end game, maybe it is all about monetizing what you have, but, you know, and clearly there's some people who they're not interested in monetizing anything, but they just want to have some sort of brand. They want, they love what they do. They're not looking to make money. Do you also work with people like that who may, you know, they're not really trying to monetize. They just want to be out there on social media. Uh, Do you help people like that? Yeah, I I have a different perspective on the monetizing. Mm -hmm. I think unless you are completely taken care of financially, Mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong with wanting to monetize. And in fact, many of us need jobs and we have bills to pay. And your goal in business doesn't have to be all money. Mm-hmm. It can be, it can be to serve others. It can be freedom of your time. It can be just, um, you know, authenticity to live the way that you want to live. But I do think that there is this aspect of business and marketing that is about monetizing. I will also say that I think the coach that you spoke to is completely right. You may not be selling a product or a service in your marketing, mm-hmm. But marketing is also selling a feeling. It's Mm. selling a dream. It's selling an escape from something somebody is experiencing currently. It's it's selling a solution. And so I do believe that all of marketing is selling. And there is this there is this like taboo around sale and there's Mm -hmm. this taboo around selling. And I think it's just because we haven't found a way to do it where it's exciting and it's fun and and we bring people on a journey to where they want to buy Mm -hmm. rather than us saying you have to buy. Yes. And I like what you said, selling a solution. That sounds like a book title, Leeti. I'm sure it is a book book title. title. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure somewhere out there it's a book (laughs) title. Yeah. Selling a solution. And, you know, and thank you for explaining that and, and your thoughts on it, because even like as coaches, you know, even a coach needs a coach. That's what they say, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're doing all of this and, and you need some help somewhere to help you navigate whatever it is throughout the business, or you're just, your journey is just beginning. Um, what has been the hardest thing that you found um, that's happening with your clients, especially after, you know, with all of the COVID and everything, we're all just trying to reemerge from that. But um, how has that changed your business or your strategy working with your clients? Wow, that's if a good at question. all, if, if, if briefly, if at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so I think that the one thing I've noticed since, mm-hmm. since 2020 mm-hmm. with clients is that, um, I wouldn't call it handholding, I would call it accountability, but I think that everybody's mental health since 2020 has taken a dive Mm -hmm. and we're all just trying our best to keep up with our families, our jobs, our (laughs) bills, our everything. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there is a lot more um, need for this accountability piece of somebody cheering you on, of somebody giving you tough love, uh, than there was before, because we just had a bigger capacity Mm -hmm. to do it ourselves before. So that's something that I've noticed that's different. I will also say that I, I also believe that there has been, I, I mean, call it 
call it whatever you want it, whatever you want to. I call it like an energetic shift of the mind frame around what is necessary and what is not in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that as far as marketing goes and as far as people developing their own businesses, mm-hmm. we're all in a phase right now where we want to sell a dream. We all think our services, our coaching, our products are the best thing in the world. But what we're realizing is that right now the focus is on how do we help other people also get through this big mental block or this surviving state or, you know, and I know I talk a lot about like, you should make your money. You should monetize. People are having a hard time with bills because I think it would be a disservice to not talk about that right now Mm -hmm. in the current state of the world for the last three years. Mm -hmm. Like it needs to be acknowledged and it needs to be acknowledged in a way where it's, it's how we're thinking, Mm -hmm. like, and it's how we're doing our businesses. So I would just say people are needing more support. Mm -hmm. People are needing more friends. People are needing more love in their businesses. And I think that's what's happened in the last three years for me and my clients. Yeah. And you really said it, you said it all because I'm sure there's someone out there when they listen to this video will say, you hit it right there, right there. That's exactly how I'm feeling. And especially for those who are saying, well, I thought I wanted to go in and have my own business, but now this happened. So if it isn't COVID, it could be something else. If it, well, they don't feel they have enough money. They don't know where to start. Um, They don't have a whole lot of friends. They're not even on social media. I'm going to go right there for that uh, wonderful social media plugin. What is the biggest thing? I mean, social media has really changed the landscape of how we do business in general, whether you're just starting out or you're seasoned. But what is it about social media that do, do you say, if you have a business or you're thinking about it, you absolutely need to be on social media? Is, is that true or kind okay. of mixy rixy? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to get different review. You're going to get different opinions on this. I yeah. say yeah. yes. Okay. And but I say yes with a caveat. I say yes, you need to be on social media purely for the presence of your business mm-hmm. because half of the world's population is on social media and a fourth of those people are not paying attention, but three fourths of those people are using it as a consumer tool. Mm. So I always say it's the same thing as if you were standing there with your business and your product. And right now, if you can't see me, my hands are kind of out in a, can I have some, you know, (laughs) if you're standing there with your business or your product and you're wondering how to get it in front of people, half of the world's population and the majority of those people are consumers are living on social media. You Mm. have a product or a service. They're looking to buy a product or a service. Why, why aren't you jumping into the pool? Mm-hmm. And I don't mean be a social media maven and like do it all day, every day. I just okay. mean purely for the presence of your business. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And and like I said, um, I was the one of those people that said, no, I'm not going on Facebook. No, no, no. And then I said, yeah, okay. Everybody else is there. And then they say, well, if you're going to be somewhere, um, particular platform, if you have an opportunity, just make sure you kind of streamline. Maybe you have a profile, maybe a whole lot going on with your family and personal um, life. And then the other one, you know, align it with your business or your soon to be business. Would that be more accurate or? I mean, I think it, it depends on if your business has a business brand or if your business has a personal brand. You okay. know, some people, uh, I think kind of like both you and I, we use our person, our own person mm-hmm. as part of the brand. Whereas other people, maybe somebody who does digital marketing and their their digital marketing company really doesn't have a face to it. Mm-hmm. They go that route and they only have their business. So if you have two separate accounts, great and good for you so that you have some privacy or if you have a personal brand you know the thing to remember is you always get to choose what you Mm. share yeah yeah you get to choose right you get to choose and there's so many different platforms because like I said I'm you know on pretty much on all of them not all of them I'm not on TikTok I haven't 
done that yet. And, you know, they, every, every, there's a plus and minuses to everything. And then there's fear. <laughs> fear. Oh, yeah. What are you doing on this? You're, you know, yeah. you're of a certain age and why would you be there? So there's so many different reasons why people would say, oh, you don't need to do that. You are, you're good. You're good with LinkedIn and you're good with Facebook and you're good with Twitter. Okay. So I say, do whatever you want to do, as long as you're doing it, you know, with, just keep in mind it, you are your brand. At the end of the day, if somebody's trying to contact you, they see your face out there and you got everything going, you are representing capital Y-O-U. So for the listeners out there, um, you know, you got, you definitely have to be mindful of whatever you put out there, right? Your content, because you're a content creator. And, um, you know, to talk about that a little bit in terms of content create, is that, um, in your opinion, is that something that's necessary uh, from the very beginning? And if so, how would one start? Like they have no clue. How do you yeah. counsel it or coach? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's a great question. And if I could really quickly just back to the platforms before I answer this, yes, I yes. would say, you know, you can be on every single platform or you can be on one platform. I think the main thing to think about or two things to think about is where do you actually enjoy being? Mm. You know, if you do this every single day, where do you actually enjoy being? Mm -hmm. But even more importantly, where is your ideal client living? If mm. your ideal client doesn't live on TikTok, why are you on TikTok? Maybe your ideal client lives on Pinterest. Then okay. you need over on Pinterest. So I would just like definitely think through that when picking your platforms. As far as um, content creation, oh, what was your question? How do you get started? Well, yeah, I'm just wondering if like if someone says, hey, uh, I'm just really interested in, in getting or I'm in my very beginning stages of entrepreneurship. I know that social media platform is important, but where do I start to how do I build the content? Do I just sort of go in and say, well, just talk about yourself for a minute, maybe do some videos. Is that really popular these days or, you know, or yeah, audio? Yeah. So, okay. Just... Oh, no, I, lo I love that question. I think, you know, obviously video is how things are working these days. And so I would always push for video. When I think about the type of content that you need to be creating, I mean, there's always like the bucket method and the bucket method is really, there are four places that you need to be creating your content to mm -hmm. Uh, you know, create your brand. And the bucket method is you need to be sharing value. Mm. People want to come to you because you can help them with mm -hmm. whatever your expertise is. And so you need to be sharing value and whether that's how to's or quick tips, or here's how you can, you know, find this, the, the thing you're looking for. Here's how we solve your solution. So there's always add value to your customers' lives. Mm. And then there's engage. What can you post that creates engagement with your customers so that they can trust you and mm -hmm. like you and get to know you. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you need to promote and sell, <laughs> you know, you need to promote and sell again, whether that's the solution that you're providing, mm -hmm. whether that's your product or your services, whether it's your business, people don't know you have a business unless you tell them you have a business. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying, um, promote and sell, meaning, Hey, come buy my thing. I'm saying promote yourself. Yeah. You're not doing anything wrong by having a business and having something that provides a solution, right? you know? And so then you've created value. You're engaging, mm -hmm. you've promoted and you've sold. You can also educate. You can mm -hmm. also connect. A lot of times people just want to know you, they want to like you and they want to trust you before yeah. they go and buy anything from you. And yeah. so create your, your content themes in those buckets so that you're kind of hitting each one of them. Yeah. And um, there's something that, uh, you know, I remember in a conversation with people were saying, and I've heard this, well, if you don't do the whole, you know, the whole thing and you don't want like this big website full of a whole lot of things, at least get a landing page, just start somewhere and talk yeah. about yourself. If it's your bio and, you know, different things, what you're available for. For example, if I'm available to speak as a keynote speaker or, you know, to colleges, universities, just something like that, just to let people know um, pretty much what you are not only willing to do, but of course, monetize eventually, hopefully yeah. that, I mean, just talk about yourself and maybe your story, um, you know, so the landing page, I mean, it's, it is what it is. I mean, whether it's short, long and all of that stuff, but that's a kind of something that was in a conversation mm -hmm. one time that I heard and I have more than just a landing page, but my understanding is that that's the beginning because 
you know, they want to know who you are. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love what you said about it can be short. Mm-hmm. I love that. It can mm-hmm. be one page. It mm-hmm. can be short. And there are so many things you can do. I think a lot of entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, when they're starting, they mm-hmm. think that they've got to create some magnificent, long web page mm-hmm. or website even, right? Where you have multiple pages. Mm-hmm. But it, you're right. It doesn't have to be that way. You can create a one pager with a photo of you, a list of your products and services, a couple of testimonials and a way to get a hold of you. That's it. Yeah. And I want to ask you how many times when you're looking to purchase something, mm-hmm. do you go over to their site? Oh, do you're you- asking me personally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do. And the other thing is, and then I'm buying online. I mean, I know it it has nothing to do with Amazon, which I absolutely love. But the point is, I might be watching a television show, a morning show, which there are several different networks. And, you know, there's something on there. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm interested in that, you know? So I'm like, great, great, great. Get the news and do that. But I got to go and get that, you know, that offer. And then they give you a limited time. So, but it does intrigue me to go there. And Sometimes I might buy right away and other times, wait a minute, I got to hold on. Maybe I already have that. Uh, maybe the cost isn't what I thought. <laughs> you know. So yes, if I, I, and I'm a visual person. So some people are more visual. Some people say, oh, I heard it on the radio and I didn't even see anybody, but I'm buying it as well. So yeah, I'm one that if I see something and I want it and I need that, I have to really go between, do I need it or do I just want it? Because it sounded good when they were just describing the product so yeah and I also think there's this you know the, the again the factor of knowing you liking you and mainly trusting you so mm-hmm. I personally if you don't have a website I find it very hard to buy from you and mm-hmm. you don't need a full website like you said it could be a page I kind of want to know that you are established somewhere you have your home on the internet mm-hmm. even outside of social media mm-hmm. I would like to be able to click somewhere and see that you have an established home somewhere give me some sort of credibility give me some sort of relationship ability Mm -hmm. and then I'm buying from you I have a hard time buying from people who don't have some sort of home on the internet Mm, yeah I see what you're saying and then the interesting because I wrote this down I mean I kind of scribbled it all in my pad when you were talking um you know knowing who your ideal client is so if again if you're going to TikTok but that's not really your audience and that's not who you're really trying to connect with necessarily then you're spending extra time almost doing nothing it's kind of like you know why we we don't the one thing we cannot get back this is what I understand and I know for sure is time you know and so when you're doing that you might as well go somewhere else and give more time dedicated to getting your brand out there somewhere else Get, keep your profiles updated. That's something that a lot of us don't do. Even seasoned professionals, like you could have your website, but you know, oh, oh, okay, maybe I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not involved in that. And maybe we need to put that on the back burner or take it off down altogether. So mm-hmm. I, I get what you're saying. And what I like, a um, couple of things when I'm talking to clients, I talk about visibility, right? And value visibility and value. Those are my two V's. I talk about it all the time, openly in my videos or what have you. And with, based on what you do and who you serve, visibility and value, is there one more important than the other to you as, as you think about it or kind of one in the same? When I think about visibility and in terms value, of brand. Mm-hmm. in terms of brand, yeah. I mean, So visibility to me is a double-edged sword. I think everybody is visible today. If you Mm. go and look at, let's just talk about Instagram for a second. Mm -hmm. If you go and look at the amount of Instagram pages there are for businesses Mm -hmm. that haven't been touched in three years, haven't been updated or actually not even businesses anymore. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. The amount of things that just get left, like you were just talking about the platforms. And so my problem is, is that, everybody is visible. But there is also this, you have to remind your clients that you exist. You know, they used to say it took about eight to nine times of somebody seeing you or your brand or a message to remember it. Now with the amount of information and content that's out there, they are saying it takes up to 59 times. Mm. So is visibility important? 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. However, is everybody visible? Yes. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. I would tend to go more for value mm -hmm. and, and deep value, not just you know, how to create a brand like I, that to me isn't value. That's very surface level value to me is something like how to create a brand that speaks to your purpose and makes your customers feel like they can trust you and that they are not alone, how to create a business that allows you to be, you know, a business that's going to be sustainable and aligns with your values in your life, like deeply valuable mm -hmm. is what I would say for people to go to. And it's not hard. Just pretend you're talking to your mom, mm -hmm. like get that deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the good news is, is that we need to understand that value is across the board. So, you know, some people say, well, I got a flimsy website. Nobody's coming to it. Well, you know, you can always revamp that. You can. So there's something out there for everyone, but somebody needs your expertise um, to our listeners. I just want to say you're listening to uh, Speak to Me First podcast show. My guest today is Lee T. Mai. She's based out of the Pacific Northwest. And I'm telling you folks, you are going to rewind this video because she's been dropping the gems today and all about branding she's a branded a brand strategist not only that but even when you look at marketing and branding and they kind of go together but you have broken them down for us today so if you're even thinking about it you're out there listening to this make sure you rewind all the way to the beginning i promise you she has not disappointed us and again thanks to my national as well as international audience for listening today i'm going to turn the table as we are going into a time zone here <laughs> um want to say um what is do you have some things coming up next um, going on with Lee T. Mai. What is coming up next that people may want to connect with you? Uh, anything that you can share? Because I know a lot of people, they can't share every project um, that they are involved in, but anything going on that you can share or something of value that you'd like to share today with the listeners? Yeah, no, this is great timing because I am actually launching a um, brand voice and marketing course in two weeks at the end of June, 2022. Yeah. Um, I found that a lot of my customers, yeah, a lot of my clients were, we've gone through the strategy of building the foundations. And now what they're getting caught up on is really getting into this authentic voice of theirs and reaching mm -hmm. their customers. And so this course launches in two weeks. It is a, um, you know, you do it on your own, but you also are a part of live coaching calls uh Q&A calls um and so yeah I'm really excited about wow. it um yeah there'll be a lot of announcements over on my Instagram and my Instagram is I A M L Y T H U Y I'm sure maybe you'll have it in show notes or or yeah. somewhere but it's I am Lee T on Instagram or Lee on uh, for my website uh yeah. but yeah I'm really excited about it Wow. And you should be, you should be. And, and so, and anybody now, is there a, a cost associated with that? So they expect to, yes, there will be some sort of cost. Yes. There will yeah, be some okay. sort and of cost. So they'll see that. Yeah. And so when I, again, resharing the video and everything, I always try to put the, the, um, your websites in and everything. So this is, I mean, and again, and you'll have it yourself where you can also reshare and make sure that people get involved. Is there a timeline? Do they need to sign up? Uh, is there a certain time? by a certain date? The only reason that there may be a timeline for them is going to depend on if they want to join these calls live or if they'd like replay. So this, this course is going to be an evergreen course, which means it lives on the internet all the time and you can join whenever you'd like to, mm -hmm. but you need to be joining during the enrollment period to be able to be a part of the live coaching calls. But again, if you are not joining during that period, you get replays to all the live coaching calls with all of the questions that people have been asking, probably similar questions to the questions you have. Wow. And you need, and believe me, somebody is going to look 
for that information. So we'll make sure that, um, be, and between the two of us, I know you do your own thing, but of course I'd love to you know, support you on my end as well, um, just to, keeping the video out. And by the way, for those of you who are listening on Speak To Me First podcast show, uh, the video will be out and the link will be shared and uploaded to YouTube. So for all of the YouTubers out there, I'm on it, Toy Johnson Vincent, just pull me up, motivational speaker, certified life coach, and you know the rest, the no sugar coating coach. I don't sugarcoat it, folks. And when I do talk to you, you'll know when I mean business. How about that? But it's in a very kind and respectful way. Um, Lee T, you just amazed me with all that you have talked about today. And I did want to, and I told you this off camera, I just want to um, sprinkle in that you also do or had a business in the past. Don't know if you're going to decide to pick that up again, but in terms of events and design, and I want to just, if you can just touch on that a bit in case someone is interested in doing something like that, any particular way they should start? Yeah, I, there are so many resources for event planners. I think if somebody wants to start in that industry now is an amazing time to do it. Mm. The event industry stopped for the last two years because of the pandemic and they are picking up now. And I know that so many people have retired their jobs from that. So how would you start? I would go to go and check out some of the really fun sites and, and um, knowledge centers. Um, bizbash.com is really fun. Um, createandcultivate.com is really fun. Smart meetings is really fun. Just go and see what people are doing in the meeting industry and start brainstorming about how you could fit in and what you could do differently and what you could bring to the table. Yeah. And by the way, for those of you who say, well, maybe you're not going outside to do something in person. I just basically said, I'm going to get on to uh, LinkedIn and do something, you know, have an event hosted and talk about career development. And I did an executive coaching for professionals and executives just like that. So, you know, you can start somewhere. But yeah. people will not know you exist if you don't put yourself out there. So with that said, um, I just always like to leave, you know, maybe, you know, one or two uh, tips for people who are looking at that entrepreneur journey right now. They've listened to your, um, your background and success. But oftentimes when we say success, that looks like something different to whomever you're talking to, right? Mm. And they always see the glamour, they see all of this, but they don't oh, understand yeah. there's a backstory and there's a backside. And it's not all sometimes, you know, people have to understand we go through whatever we go through to get to where we are now. So with that said, just a couple of tips you might give to someone who say, you know what, I tried, I wanted to be an entrepreneur, it will never work. I wanted to go into the event, but ah, I don't think so. You know, I don't know what to do with my brand. My point to them, just start somewhere. But what would you say? Just a couple of tips before we close out the uh, episode. Yeah, I love that this is how you close this podcast because this is so important. I tell people that you've been tricked. Entrepreneurship is not a job that you quit. It is a lifestyle. And my example is just like your health is something that you will work on for the rest of your life. If you choose to be an entrepreneur, this is a long-term journey and you will have good times and bad times and good seasons and bad seasons. And I just quickly, I like to share with people, I'm now in year six of entrepreneurship. I did corporate, I had a corporate job before this. My journey started with 20,000 in debt. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it started with making over six figures in my, in my first year of business. And then my entire business crashed and I lost over 40, $400,000 in 48 hours. I was unemployed for a year and then I started again and now we're back up. That is the journey and that is extreme. But if anybody tells you that it is that you wake up one day and you're successful or that you don't have ups and downs, they're lying to you. This is a long-term journey, just like life, ups and downs, and keep going. Wow. You put it 
right where it needs to be. And, you know, keep going, start somewhere. Um, to all my listeners today, both national and international, I'm thank you so much because for joining and listening to Lee T. I call a coach Lee T, if you will. I just added everything else into all of her other <laughs> titles, business strategist, brand strategist, content creator. I mean, event design, all of that is a part of you. But you know something, I can't let you go without saying you have a, a beautiful uh, son, I believe, correct? You do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, kudos to you being a mom and everything. But with all of that busyness, how do you do it all? <laughs> oh, it gosh. Just, I know that's a whole nother. Part. But I mean, you, you just you just do it. Encourage you, just, you just do it. You just get by. You just do it. And again, back to seasons. Sometimes all this everything is about business. Sometimes business has to be put on the back burner. Sometimes yeah. it's all about family. Sometimes family has to just hold on a second. Like you just do it. You just do it. And I like you said, you just have to hold on a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be there. Don't worry. And mm -hmm. um, for most of us, you know, busy, busy. Uh, we are always there for our families. And a lot of times that spills right into that self-care because you can have you can have a business, but if you're sick and you're unhealthy, that's not going to work. You're going to not only lose yourself and lose dollars, but I guess I would rather have my health than a, and a healthy. It would be great to have both a healthy, you know, uh, lifestyle and healthy body and all that spirit in mind, but also um, a healthy company. And you can't, to me, if things are going awry from a health self-care perspective, it doesn't matter how beautiful your website is and all of that. It's just, it's not going to work, you know, um, at, at least it's not going to work 100%. So, you know, we got to, I let people know out there when you're listening, uh, speak to me first podcast show. I don't only sit around all day and do podcast interviews. I do other things and content creator constantly posting. Yeah, that's me. Um, oh, there she goes again. There she goes. Again. That would be me. Um, all of that. But I realized self-care because at some point then I just said, well, maybe I need to take a minute and say, well, I don't need to post today. I have a lot of things going out there. Let, you know, let people see it and do whatever and respond and, or not, right? Um, and, and then keep going, move on to another project. So uh, I think that self-care is really important as it relates to business. And you know, if, if that's uh, agreeable, then we just need to do more of it. That's all, you know. Uh, we had ment uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, um, which was just previous, and now we're going into a whole summer thing. So I say enjoy life. Do what you need to do. And speaking of, you're in the Pacific Northwest. We're getting ready to close this out. I have one last question. What do you like to do for fun? You do everything else, you know? I mean, in the Pacific Northwest... <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I'm not an outdoorsy person, which is what you're supposed to be in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. So, this question is so interesting. Business is actually my passion and it always has been. And so I love what I do. You know, the only other thing that I think I love as much as business is hanging out with my girlfriends. And I'm, you know, I'm mid thirties. I have my son, you know, I'm a grown up, but I feel like there is nothing better than sitting around with your girlfriends, mm -hmm. having a drink, having a coffee and just, you know, gossiping and, and doing nothing and just being around other people that love you. Really, that's what I love to do. Excellent. Excellent. I always say, you know, what do people like to do fun? Because they do everything and they're so business-like and they're all the time and you're constantly going with families and children and, and everything else included. And I say, well, there is a moment that goes right back to self-care. You have to be able to laugh and live and be healthy. And that's really the, the goal. It is for me and hopefully most of my guests. And I hear people say it all the time, say, you won't believe it. Uh, I just needed to step away for a moment to just have a moment to myself, enjoy my friends and family, et cetera, because it can't be business all of the time. Um, you know, there has to be some sort of balance. Even if you're in corporate, people will say traditional nine to five, that what do people want more now? I'm, my background is HR, uh, matching, uh, you know, talented major corporations. That's where I started, traditional nine to five, and now talks about career development, how to keep your job, how to <laughs> balance your career. So I, I hear what people, I ask them coaching wise, so what do you most want from your next opportunity? And people say, I just want balance. Mm. I want balance. 
So to create that, it, it really does start with capital Y-O-U. And I thank you so much for um, even sharing that a little bit personal about yourself and, and all today. So I want to thank my guests. Thank you so much, Lee T. My yeah, for showing you. up today. Yes. And we're going to go ahead and uh, Lee T, would you please uh, say your website one more time? And yeah, we'll it's. Yep, it's just my name, Lee T, and it's www.lythuy.com. All right, and we know you're on Instagram. You know, you're a mm -hmm. big Instagram person. You're also on LinkedIn, but you go back and forth. So they'll find you and all of that. And the reality is, I just want to say, for people out there say, well, how did you connect? Well, we connected via LinkedIn. You saw something, or either my post or what have you, and reached out. And I, you know, I often ask people before they come on the show, I said, well, you know, how did you connect with me or why? I said, there's the big W-H-Y because there are several podcasts, there are several people, um, they're doing things all the time, putting content out there and you could be on anybody's show, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thankful when someone says, no, I saw you, I, it, was, it was your energy, I just see your postings and, and all of that, um, you know, and I'm really down to earth. I'm a native New Yorker, <laughs> uh, you know, I do tell it like it is and I'm the no sugar coating coach, but I always do it with respect and love at the end of the mm -hmm. day. So mm -hmm. I thank you for even uh, gracing the Speak to Me podcast show stage today, um, found on Anchor FM and Spotify and anywhere you get your podcast. But let me tell you folks, you've been listening to Lee T. Mai, and I'm gonna tell you right now, don't get it wrong. She spells her name L-Y-T, H U Y again, separate L Y, then T H U Y, and then my. Now, just say it with me Lee T My. We're thanking you very much uh, for joining us today. And um, I'll be able to, you know, connect with you again off camera at some point. Um, and we'll be able to get that link out to you to share it to the world. Thank you to all of our Thank listeners you. today. You are so welcome. And I want to say before I end, as I do end all of my broadcasts, you know, if you're thinking about branding, just think about who you are. I can't tell you enough. Capital Y-O-U. You're not a title. You're more more than that. You need to understand who you really are internally and your mindset. And you would be amazed how successful you will be. With that said, as I end all of my broadcasts, I want to say to you and my audience, success, success is in your future. Bye for now. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Lee T. Bye now.